Testimonials is a very big component of most websites. You find them on your homepage and your contact and about me pages where people say some nice things about you. And though personally, I'm not a big fan of a testimonial because I think 99% of them are fake and useless. I have to admit, I still use them on websites because, well, after all, they are testimonials to your product and to your service. So when you build out a new website, you need a testimonial. And the ultimate add-on block for that in Gutenberg from Brainstorm Force does a really good job. We give it four ferocious cats ratings. We think it does a pretty good job. A little bit tweaking here and there can make it even better. So here with Melissa P's travel blog site, let's bring in a little... There's reader's thoughts over here. Let's bring in our own testimonial. Let's build that in over there and see how this block from Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg works. Remember to get that plugin. Simply go to Plugins, Add New, and search for Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg from Brainstorm Force. Yeah, you can just say Ultimate Add-ons Gutenberg, and you will find it. On my page, I'm going to drop it in here. I'll create a new block, and then you will find it under Ultimate Add-ons for Blocks. To search for it, you can just type in here Testimonial, and I just type in TES and there you see it. Click on that, it will bring it in and it is activated so you can begin working on the right. What you see here is that it is actually a testimonial carousel. So you have control over how many testimonials will display and how many columns. Let's go over to carousel here first and deactivate autoplay before we all get motion sickness. What you then have is the number of testimonials. You can reduce it to zero. I didn't know that. You can reduce it to one. And you can add as many testimonials as this slider allows, apparently 50. And that's the max. I hope you never go that big. Three to four is the maximum you should go for testimonials. If you haven't convinced people by number two, I think five, six, or seven more, it's not going to do the job for you. Only the best goes on your home page. The other control that you have is your columns. So you can add it to a second one, you can bring in two, and you can bring in three. Now, why on earth would you want to do that? Observe what happened when I have three testimonials and the same amount of columns. And that is that the navigation arrows and dots have been removed. Basically, you have three columns now with a testimonial in each. That's pretty nice. And the reason for that is, that if you make any changes now in terms of styling for color and topography for any of the text in here, it will apply across all three. But if you were to create only one testimonial and copy that and put it in different columns, you'll have to go make those changes individually each time. Let's work with the carousel in this instance. So I'm going to put it back on one. So we have a little bit more space to see what we are working with here. We've got the testimonial up here, then the person, and you can also give their position or company they work in. Let's go and have a look at the carousel. We had the order play, and you have all the other things here. You can choose how you want to display the arrows and the dots, the radius for that, how big it should be, and you make the changes to the looping up here. This is a carousel feature. It's very nice that they've thought of bringing that in into the testimonials. Topography is giving you all the normal controls that you need in terms of font size and all of those things like line height. And you can apply that on a responsive basis for tablet as well as for mobile. I really like the fact that we have that control within the ultimate add-ons. I just wish sometimes that the responsiveness, they could have extended it to a few more other features within these add-on blocks. But like I always say, hey, you know, it's free. So let's not complain. Color settings give you a lot of control. You have the testimonial color. We can put that in blue. Then you have the name color for John Doe. Put that in purple. We make a really funky little testimonial here. Company color you can change. And then arrow and dots colors that you can change as well. To change the content, simply click on it and type in there the new company. And then, of course, here you can change this to Johnny Doe. Johnny Doey if that even exists. Let's close here and go up one to image. This is where we want to bring in an image. And yeah, you can do that. Select image and I recommend that you always go for a one-to-one -one ratio image. Like if we bring in Johnny, 
That's what her friends call her, Johnny Doey. We don't see her and the reason is we are probably not on one. So if we have to click here on one and then we go back and now she's not John Doe. She's just John Doe. Let's call her Sarah Bing. Sarah Bing Bing. And now when we have our image selected, we have control over the image position and sizing. So we can put it at the bottom, at the top, which is very popular. And I like also on the left. Once you throw it on the left, also notice that up here in the block toolbar, you can change the alignment. So for this, I'm going to put it all the way to the left. You see where I'm going with this. Image style is currently set to circle. I put it at square. It fits in there nicely. And you can change the width over here. You also have the sizing. I can put it on medium or large. Because I'm not going to go that big, I'll put it on medium, but I'll change that a little bit. So that is what you can do with the image and you can bring in the image for all of them. So two more, let's grab two more images here. This guy is Charlie Wang. Charlie Wang. Ooh, Charlie, Charlie Wang. And then the last one, we have already baptized him as Johnny Doey. And Johnny Doe. Ah, that looks like a Johnny Doey. I agree, right? This guy is probably cringing when he hears me say that. Uh, we've done topography, looked at color settings, and then spacing a lot of control that we have over here. The gap between the content and the dots. This one works. We can change the dots. Row gap. And the row gap will apply more spacing here in the row. And then you have content padding. Testimonial bottom margin and all of this. Image vertical padding is important here. I can change where this image is located vertically as well as add more space here between the image and the content. Additional control for the background where you can decide whether you want to have a color there or an image and I'm going to clear it. I think if I wanted to put it within a color I'll rather go put it in a column and apply the color to the column. Then I have a little bit more control over that. And you have the option also to add a border. Border may work, but again, I don't like the fact that the arrows are outside the border. I would have liked that to be included. So you have to think how you're going to style this one. In this case, I'm going for none. This is a very basic testimonial, but I like how you can place the image and I like the control that you have over this image, which makes this a really good testimonial block. Let's update and we go and preview it as it currently is, and then I'll give you a tip for responsiveness. On the front end, we scroll down once the page loads. Melissa, oh right, and what we have here is full width. Remember, I've mentioned this in other tutorials. When you bring in these content elements within the WordPress editor, they don't have margins. They don't have the outside placement that you can have in many page builders. So to restrict them to the content width, the best thing to do is put them inside columns. Let's fix that first so you can see what I'm going to do. I'll use the ultimate add-ons element for this. Go over here, which is advanced columns. I'll look for columns. You can use the WordPress columns. I like the advanced columns. And then just click here to interact with the columns. And once you see it says here in the options sidebar, advanced columns under block, you just reduce your layout to one. Go over here, click on it to interact with it and go to the little handlebar on the left, click and drag until you see that blue line inside the column and drop it there. Update. And now we should have what we want. Now it should be the way we wanted it to be and life will be back to normal. There we go. So you can cycle through this. And if you want it on autoplay, you go back and put it on autoplay. Always a good idea to have it on autoplay, carousel, autoplay, and leave this one on pause on hover. It's updated and go to the front to see that that is indeed doing the job we assigned it to do and that Johnny Doey will be rotating. There we go. And you can set the timing and how long it takes for this. And if I hover over it, Johnny Doey takes a pause. And then I still have control here. Let's view this on tablet and on mobile. 
in my Blisk browser, I go to Blisk modes and enable developer mode here so we can look at that. I have my favorites here, so let's go first into tablets and see how that will display. Scroll down. And this is the area where I'll draw your attention to these navigation arrows. This happens almost to every slider on the market. I've not really seen sliders that are good at avoiding this. And this is where I wish there can be a little bit more control over padding on the inside. And there is. So let's go back and then we look for spacing. I just collapse these. We go to spacing and we're going to use this content padding. What I found works the best is if I drag it all the way to 50 pixels. This may not be the best then for your desktop display. And let's go here to the front and I'll focus first here on my desktop display. If you look at it, it still looks good, but it looks then a tad better on a tablet display. You can also go here and see how it will look in landscape. Put it back there and let's see how it will look on a Samsung Galaxy, right? Again, a little bit squashed, but not underlapping or overlapping the arrows on the left and right. To overcome this problem though, you simply go to your carousel general and you say only dots and you remove those arrows and they won't be such a burden to you. And really people know how to work with testimonials. I mean, even kindergarten kids know how to work these things nowadays. Before we leave, let's have a look at how this will display if we go to general and we put our columns on three. We'll have to make a few changes here. So we go to the image and we put it at the top and things begin to look better. We can increase the size now. And we can also even come here and align everything to the middle. See how quickly I had done that. You will need probably some spacing here. So go to spacing and your spacing options will change a little bit. So testimonial bottom margin, name bottom margin. And nothing changes here. And that is because they are related to the carousel. So take, take note of that on your little scribble book there, that these things do not seem to apply when we go into this mode and we are not in carousel. Let's have a final view for our page on the front end, see how it looks. And I think it does a pretty interesting job because it still does carousel on my mobile display. Very interesting. And while we're on that last point, I suddenly remember when we go up, up, up here and we put everything back on columns and we put it on one column, you will see you have responsive control over how many columns will display on different devices. So if I had three columns here and I had maybe five or eight, let's say seven of these, and I have three columns for my tablet, I will set it to two. And then for my cell phone, I will put it on one. And that will give me a little bit more space to play around with when I go to those devices. Let's have a look at that. Let's first go into our tablet. You will see I've got three here. Didn't add an image there yet. So let's just go to the first one, three, two. And if I go to my mobile, three, one. This is a free add-on from Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg. Check it out in the link in the description below. It will take you to the Astra theme page, which is from the guys Brainstorm Force, who brings you that excellent theme, which I'm also using during these tutorials. We would like to give it a five, but we think there is some room for improvement there, but we love that it's free and we hope you enjoy it too. See you in the next video. This is JP signing off.